Okay, so I'm doing my standalone harness uh, for this LS swap that I'm going to be putting in my Chevy C10. And I've got the wiring uh, pretty well wrapped up. I just got the fuse block buttoned up, so I thought I'd take this opportunity to explain kind of the logic and how it works uh, when doing one of these type of fuse block and relay setups on your standalone harness. So here's the, uh, here's the idea behind it. And the biggest shout out goes out to uh, Brendan at lt1swap.net. He's definitely uh, been helping out countless amount of people get through their own standalone harness and has helped me through many, many of them and does all my tunes for me and stuff like that. So this is basically an expanded version of the way he instructs on, uh, on his website. And uh, he's also got how-to videos on YouTube and a Facebook page. So check his stuff out, lt1swap.net. And that's going to be the biggest biggest help for you. So here's uh, here's here's how I do it. This here, this wire, this big red wire is going to be the main power feed from the truck. It's a 12 volt constant, and it's fairly heavy gauge because it's going to be feeding everything uh, on the truck. The f the uh, fuel pump relay and that relay that runs all the sensors, such as the oxygen sensors and uh, the injectors and so on. So this. 12 volt constant input goes in here to this uh, this fuse pin location and then straight from there it goes through a fuse and out through this orange wire which goes to the PCM back through this way and runs the PCM 12 volt constant uh, through a fuse that way so beyond that it goes past that point up to these relays which is the uh, this one's a fuel pump relay, and this one runs all the ignition hot components, all these pink wires. Uh, that's everything that needs to get hot. Uh, when By hot, I mean have it uh, 12 volt positive when the ignition is turned on only. And so that's why we have a relay going to that. And so what happens is this pink wire is gonna be the ignition input from the truck. So when you turn the key on, this pink wire will have 12 volts going to it and then that triggers this relay which then sends the power out through this wire to this fuse pin location and on this kit you should be able to see there that these pins are actually all connected so every pin despite not having a wire going to it on this side of the block is all going to have power from the output of this relay through this wire and that's gonna work to allow us to put a fuse in each one of these spots on the other side. Each one of those will have a fuse in it. And then through each fuse, power gets sent out to one of various uh, components. I've got it written down how I did it. And I, for example, though, this is uh, injectors one and three and O2 sensor. And this is the next one's a, a map sensor and PCM, and this one's math and uh, something else. Regardless, I just uh, went ahead and did it this way so that I wouldn't have to run a wire from each one to the next and daisy chain them. This way, all the wire, this way, I only need one wire to power all of these points, and then the fuse carries the power from these connected fuse pins to through the fuse into these pink wires and that's activated again only when the ignition hot is coming in from the truck. Then the other relay here is triggered by the PCM. This is the fuel pump relay so this uh, this wire gets 12 volts to it when the PCM commands it and then power is sent out of the relay once it's triggered through this gray wire down to this uh, fuse pin location through the fuse and then out this way out to the fuel pump to run the fuel pump so that's pretty much it recap power comes in runs both these relays power is fused out through this orange wire to the computer and then these two relays one's for the fuel pump and one is for all these uh, sensor hots sensor 12 volt ignition hots so beyond the fuse block, what we have is all these bundle of wires and the OBD2 port. 
and all these wires need to get ran into the truck and that's why I've just got them kind of bundled up here saved for me for when I do the install and same with the OBD2 port and they just split out of the bundle right here and the idea is that because the bundle splits up here where one set of wires goes to the computer and the other ones go to the fuse block these wires are going to come out at the fuse block location also and then run along the inner fender into the into the cab where they'll get hooked up to one of them is a park neutral switch one of them is a malfunction indicator lamp the check engine light and uh, one of them is for the tack and one of them is for speed sensor output uh, if you're going to run an electronic speedo and so that's how I've got that ran so the idea is that when I hook up the computer and oh boy I hook up the computer I'll be able to mount my fuse block somewhere nearby you know whatever and it's going to just have this nice split out of the loom where I'll be able to mount it all up make it look pretty it's going to be nice and uh, uh, clean looking and then I wanted to talk about a couple other things that I do slightly different than uh, the way Brendan does it on LT1 swap and that is that where possible I try to just clean things up uh, a little bit I didn't do this on the first several ones that I did because I didn't really know any better uh, but now what I like to do uh, specifically on these uh, Chevy swaps is I like to go ahead and take this uh, fuel pump wire and go ahead and run it along the harness over the intake and then I'm gonna drop it down in the truck along with the uh, speed sensor wiring so these will whoops so these will both run down the top of the transmission and uh, one will go to the speed sensor and one will go uh, to the fuel pump and I just think that's a cleaner way of doing it because you don't have to have an extra wire uh, running in a different direction uh, that you weren't going to go anyways. And then I did the same thing with the ignition input wire from the truck to the relay. That's the same thing where it's running all along the harness all the way up to the back of the intake. And that's this guy. And it's going to hook up to where the old... Uh, HEI 12 volt ignition input went into the distributor. I'm going to just splice into that wire and have it be back here and I'll put connectors on both so they can be uh, disassembled if I ever pulled the engine out of the truck or whatever. And that I think is a good way of doing it. It's the way I just think is cool. I don't, doesn't matter to me if you do it that way or not, but I just think that's a cool thing. And so to give you another idea I'm gonna have my fuse block here this loom is gonna split out near the fuse block it's gonna mount uh, or I'll have it running along that way but it'll be split out in a clean way like this so I'll loom it together with one piece and then I'll do a separate piece right here going out to these wires so that's gonna look super clean and then the same thing kind of here this will get loomed all the way down and then it'll split out here to the computer and here to the fuse block and such. So that's how it's all going to work out.